My name is Nikola Milutinovic. I am a software architect at uh, Levi 9, and uh, I will give you a short talk about security in microservices. So, uh, when we are talking about microservices, what are the ma major concerns that we should have uh, when dealing with security? Well, uh, you can see on the slide we have three microservices talking to backend systems and a whole host of different clients. So, the first thing that we should be aware of is we're dealing with uh, multiple targets that we need to secure. When I say multiple targets, I don't mean only several microservices, but they can have uh, several instances, they can be clustered, etc., etc. Uh, second thing that we need to be aware of is uh, that we will be dealing with chain the requests. With microservice architecture, we are decomposing our system. So uh, one microservice is usually expected to talk to uh, the next microservice in order to fulfill the requests. And of course, uh, you might run into a requirement like we had for our current client that all requests made to all microservices need to be authenticated. One of the things that you also need to keep in mind is that credentials, that's the, the, what the, how user proves who he is, that they must be kept safe. So with all this in mind, uh, what is the uh, security uh, service or architecture that is most preferable? Uh, that is, in my opinion, token-based single sign-on uh, uh, systems. With uh, those, you're dealing with a client. You also have a token server, and you have a whole host of uh, services uh, uh, ru running behind the scenes. And the first thing that the client will do is a uh, contact authorization server to get the token. Uh, there, the client will uh, perform authentication and all that's needed. And from that moment on, the requests made by the client to the services, in our case microservices, will be accompanied by the token, and that token will be uh, the authentication. So, uh, uh, c considering that uh, microservices usually employ REST uh, API, and REST is HTTP based, uh, what are some of the standard token based uh, uh, single sign on systems? Uh, historically, the first uh, to show up was SAML, which is now in version 2.0. SAML is uh, older, um, it uses uh, XML as the format uh, of its messages. Uh, the second one that uh, appeared uh, later was OAuth 2. And it's very popular these days, um, supported by many of the identity providers. OAuth 2 is using uh, for tokens uh, uh, unique strings, and practically that means usually some sort of UUID schema. And uh, the last one to appear that I'm aware of is OpenID Connect, which builds on OAuth 2 uh, with certain changes, and one of them uh, is uh, the, that for tokens, they are using what is known today as JWT. JWT stands for JSON Web Tokens, and I will show you one. So, um, the JSON Web Tokens, first of all, are self-contained, which means that all that you need to know about the user in order to perform your security decisions is contained in the token itself. JWTs can be signed uh, cryptographically. They can be also encrypted. So in order to protect potentially sensitive uh, uh, data about the user, and they can be large. Uh, when I say large, this is what I mean. This is an example of a small uh, uh, JWT. And you will see just how small it actually is. It consists of three parts. The blue part here is the he header. The green part is actually the payload of the token. Uh, in JVT terminology, it's uh, called uh, claims. And the last part, the red part here, that's the crypto signature 
of the first two. Uh, the first two parts are basically base64 uh, encoded uh, JSON strings. And uh, when we decode them, this is what we get. The uh, header is containing a uh, mandatory type, saying that this is a JVT token, and the uh, crypto uh, algorithm used for signing and or uh, encrypting the token. And the payload uh, shown here uh, contains uh, certain properties. The most important property is uh, this one. That is the timestamp uh, when the token expires. So in this case, uh, validating a token means checking the signature is OK and checking that the token has not expired. If those two conditions are met, this token is good and you can proceed. Uh, then there are some uh, fields like uh, audience here, which are uh, the described by the standard. And uh, the rest of these fields are basically proprietary and uh, they are uh, meant for spring security that I was using in my uh, demo. Uh, so uh, scope that's uh, uh, related to OAuth2 scopes. Uh, authorities, that's spring security roles. Uh, client ID and uh, for instance username, that's basically the user, the username of the user that's, uh, that this token refers to. And uh, since I've had problems connecting my laptop, uh, we will not have a demo. So I will skip quickly to final words. What we can say ab about uh, uh, these tokens and uh, uh, using uh, uh, OAuth2 uh, securities. First of all, if you are using plain OAuth2 and UUID, those tokens are small, but they need uh, decoding. And uh, mm, if you're using JVTs, they are self-contained, so you don't need to decode them, but they can be large. The difference between UUID and JVT is something like a difference between uh, calling a method by value and passing parameters by value and by re reference. UUID is a reference and you need to uh, decode it. JVT is the uh, whole uh, value. And uh, last but not the least, uh, I have not said anything yet about authorization. Uh, these systems do not deal with authorization that, that, that much. And in my opinion, authorization should be lo locally done by the microservices themselves. Okay, so any questions? Looks like I've uh, managed to confuse you. Either that or you've had a good lunch. Okay, guess nobody. Well, thank you for being here. And uh, we will now get to the other speakers, I guess.